Give God the praise. Give God the glory. Yes, yes. Oh God, we thank you for that day. That day. We can only imagine. We can only imagine, but someday, that day. And we thank you, God, for this day. This day when you give us just a little sneak preview of heaven. This day when you give us just a glimpse of your glory. This day when you invite us to be a part of what you're going to do forever and are already doing. This moment that connects with Alpha and Omega beginning and end. This moment when heaven comes to earth. And this moment when we help to be a part of bringing heaven to earth. Thank you, thank you, thank you, O oh God. And now, God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be in alignment with you, with your love, and with your will. Amen. And so it is. Amen. Amen. A shout out to Cameron Jones, Minister Deidre. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful musical adventure that we've had today. It's an adventure, an adventure of the Spirit, and we are so grateful for that. And the uh, first three weeks of 2023 have been a spiritual adventure on lots of different levels. One of the adventures that we're so excited about right now is the adventure of the Bible in 20 days. There's about 15 or 20 of us that are on that adventure together, listening or reading the Bible, and... Uh, Part of the reality when it comes to the Bible is it's not all pretty. It's just not. And in fact, there are some parts that are absolutely messy. <laughs> and there's a lot of questions coming up about some of those parts. Uh, this week, uh, we had a curiosity in our scripture reading. I was a talking donkey. Uh, that text I've never preached on. Maybe someday I will, but I've got to figure it out first. Uh, sometimes what's in the scripture can in fact uh, create some metaphors that really don't work well today. They made sense then, but they don't really make sense now. Not necessarily. Or we have to get through some offenses in the scripture. And honestly, that's true in today's scripture in the gospel. Where Jesus calls Peter and Andrew and James and John to follow him. He calls them to fish for people. Now, fishing for people, I think, is problematic. Partly, for me, it's a challenge because it brings me back to when I was growing up, and I grew up in a family where people enjoyed fishing on both sides of the family. And my first time going fishing, there was this big buildup of what a wonderful occasion it would be. And I get there, and I see them putting a worm on the hook, and that worm is squirming. And I'm thinking to myself, that, that looks like that worm's in pain. And this is supposed to be fun. And then it's like they throw that out there with this sharp hook and you have a fish doing violence to the worm. <laughs> and then you have the fish you finally catch coming up and the hook is caught. And then you put the fish out and it can't breathe and the fish is going... I can remember being offended by that as a young child. I can remember thinking, these fish must be in pain. And my grandfather said, oh, fish don't feel pain. Oh, I've since done some research, and then they do. And so I have some challenges with this metaphor because of its violence. And that's true for a number of scriptures where we have to get through some stuff. So for me, in getting through this scripture, I needed to get back to what the real meaning is. Now, you could say the meaning is you're trying to reach people. But again, the language here is proclamatic because you're talking about hooking people. And the reality is that when it comes to loving and reaching out to people, it's not always been done in real loving ways. In fact, there's been a lot of spiritual violence done, and some of it comes back to this scripture, where they talk about going out and hooking people, and sometimes using fear and violence to do it. Turn your life over to Jesus, or you're going to go to hell. Violence, manipulation. I've heard this, this passage preached many times with that kind of language about it. 
And that we've got this responsibility to go out and fish for people, to save people. We're called to love people. And yes, salvation is a part of that, wholeness is a part of that, but we are invited to do it in ways that love people and do no spiritual violence. What would be a better metaphor? Well, one metaphor that comes to mind would be if Jesus, rather than coming to people fishing, came to a kitchen in a restaurant and said, Come, follow me, and let us cook up something good that will nourish the world. And Jesus, again, when he would invite people into Jesus' work, wouldn't go to Capitol or Congress or the White House, would, would go to a place where people were serving. Jesus is about serving. One of the things that's important in today's scripture, once you get beyond the messy metaphor, is that Jesus comes to ordinary people and invites them to be a part of what he is doing. Jesus comes to Peter and Andrew and James and John in their ordinary daily lives and invites them to be a part of the miracle of love and wholeness and healing. The metaphor that made sense to them and part of what comes through in this scripture is that Jesus brings God's love into the world through ordinary people in ordinary moments. One thing that really stands out in this scripture is the word immediately. Jesus sees them and invites them and immediately they drop their nets and they follow him. I find this compelling. It amazes me that they didn't have a debate. They didn't ask follow-up questions. They didn't say, Jesus, what do you mean by this? We need to go back and talk to our families. We need to figure this out. Let us sleep on it. Scripture says they immediately followed. Jesus immediately invites them, and they immediately follow. Which makes me wonder, what would happen if we too immediately stopped what we were doing when invited by the Spirit to do something. I don't know about you, but many of us go into these days where we have these amazing to-do lists, so much to do, we don't know how we're going to get it done. And I know that sometimes I'll be working through my list and somebody will come to my heart and my mind. And I'll feel prompted to reach out. And I'll say, okay, I will do it after and then I'll do it here. And then the next thing I know, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm waking up, and I'm thinking about that person again, and I hadn't called them, I hadn't reached out. And the next thing I know, I'll say, okay, I'm going to do it tomorrow, first thing. And then other first things come into the picture. And the next thing I know, I'm laying awake the next night at 2 in the morning, thinking about somebody. And sometimes I actually do stop what I'm doing and immediately follow. And it's amazing what happens. I think that's the real point in this scripture, this idea of being open to the immediate moment, knowing that God works through our to-do list, but also God sometimes interrupts our to-do list and gives us something of eternal value, a lasting gift greater than a check mark on a list. God invites, God calls all of us through our own skills and our own gifts. God worked through the skills of Peter and John and Peter and Andrew, and God works through our gifts as well. God is a God who invites us to live into this, into this fullness. What would happen if we listened to those moments? What happened in our story happened at a point in time. But I think here's the other thing coming through in the scripture. It was more than a point in time. In the Greek, there's this term kairos, and it means time beyond time. It means living beyond clock time. Oftentimes, we are driven by clock time. Right now, it's five minutes to 12. That's clock time. But what's happening in our hearts and in our lives right now, right now at this moment, it's beyond 11.55 a.m. Eastern time. It is a part of God's eternal moment. It's a part of all time. Our invitation as a people of God is to be a part of Kairos time, living lives of eternal impact making a difference? What would happen if we fully opened ourselves up to the immediate invitation and the immediate call? What if Jesus showed up in a, at an eclectic praise rehearsal and said, come, follow me? What would that look like? I think it's, we'd be part of what eclectic praise is already doing, which is making videos that reach out to the world. 
not to hook people, but to love people through art. Listening to the call, using our talents, opening up our gifts. One of our members had a Kairos moment when they were leaving their apartment. And as they were walking down the hallway of their apartment, they happened to see the person who was doing custodial work who they passed almost every day and had really not had a conversation before. But this day, they just felt prompted in their spirit, even though they had a full schedule, to just say, thank you. Thank you for what you do to keep us, to keep this space clean. And then they felt prompted even further to just offer a financial gift to the person to say thank you. They had no way of knowing the impact of that gift. We live in a city where there's all kinds of support people making other things possible and oftentimes the busy people walk by and they don't even notice. When this person received the gifts, they did weep. But it wasn't so much for the financial gift. It's because somebody finally noticed the difference they were making in the world. People just want to be seen. Jesus saw Andrew and Peter and James and John. Jesus saw them and said, come and be a part of what's happening. Come and be a part of the miracle making and the healing in this world. And Jesus sees and notices us. If at any moment you feel forgotten in what you're doing, if you feel covered up with your to-do list, know that what you're doing and who you are is making a difference. There are these kairos moments, these enduring gifts. I have the permission to share a story of a conversation I had this week with one of our beloved members, A. Billy Hinnon Jones. He moved to uh, Mexico, but his heart is still here in so many ways, and, and uh, I'm so glad that we were able to have a conversation. He said, I just wanted to hear a friendly voice, and I wanted a prayer. And then he talked a little bit about how we can pray for him, and we'll be praying for him at noon. He has some, some significant health issues that we'll be praying for. And then came the Kairos moment, the enduring gift moment. He said, let me tell you the best thing that's happened so far in 2023. He shared about his sister, Ruthine, who had not talked with him or him to her for 50 years. They'd not been in conversation for 50 years because she couldn't accept him being a part of the QT Plus community. He'd missed her, but didn't even know where she was. They'd lost touch to that extent. But she called, she found him, and they had a conversation, and they talked for over an hour. Turns out that what had opened her heart is that two of her children had come out. <laughs> and she began to rethink. But a brother and a sister were brought together in a holy healing moment. It happened in clock time, but more importantly, it happened in eternal time, in Kairos time. Those kinds of moments are available to each one of us as we listen to the call to our heart. In fact, I believe enough in this idea of Kairos moments and eternal moments and enduring gifts that I believe each one of us will have that kind of opportunity at some point this week. Each one of us, because God works through every body. As we stay open to it, it may mean that we need to stop for a moment and pause and simply pray, God, what is it you want to do through me? Who do you seek to bring to my heart? What is my place in this story? What would you have me do? Who would you have me be? And the voice of love will say to us in that Kairos moment, Love. Tell your story. Be a healer. Oh yes, we are called not to hook people, but to love people. Amen.